much biology. Okay, so if we're interested in graphing uh, polynomials in turning point form um, by hand, it's actually quite easy. Um, first of all, we want to actually locate the locate. We want to find the location of the turning point. So we let the bit inside the bracket equal zero. So we have x plus one equaling zero. Solving for x gives us an x value of negative one. If we substitute this back into the equation to find the y, we would find that this becomes zero. So we're just left with negative three, and so therefore the turning point is negative 1, negative 3. Next we want to find the intercepts. So if we want to find the y-intercept, we let x equal 0. And if we let x equal 0, y becomes negative 2 multiplied by 1 squared, take 3. If we evaluate this, we get negative 5. Perhaps we want to find the x-intercepts. So we let y equal 0. If we let y equal 0, we get 0 equals negative 2, x plus 1 all squared, take 3. I'm trying to solve for x here, add 3 to both sides. Add 3 to both sides. And then we also want to divide by negative 2. So we get 3 divided by negative 2 equals x plus 1 all squared. Now, to get rid of this square term, we need to take the square root. But it's a little bit troubling here because we know that in the real number system, we can't find the square root of a negative number. So what this tells us is that there is no x-intercepts. Okay, so now we can go ahead and graph this thing. If we set up some axes, this is just going to be a rough sketch. I'm not known for my graph drawing abilities. So first of all, we'll put in our turning point, negative 1, negative 3. We notice that there's a negative out the front, so we know that it's going to be inverted or a reflection in the x-axis. So it's not going to cut the x-axis. It's got a y-intercept at negative 5. So it's going to look something like And that's not a very nice parabola, but um, you get the picture. So if we wanted to, if we started with the basic parabola x squared, and we wanted to state the transformations that have taken place, well, we would say that there's been a dilation of two units parallel to the y-axis or from the x-axis. There's been a reflection in the x-axis. There has been a horizontal translation of one unit to the left or in the negative x direction, and there's been a vertical translation of three units down, or in the negative y direction. Okay, so moving on to the second example we've got there. y equals a half, 2 take x all squared, take 1. We go through the same steps. We want to find the location at the turning point, so we'll let the bit inside the bracket equal 0. So we get 2 take x equals 0, and then solving, we get x equals 2. Substituting this back into the equation to find y, we'll get y equals a half multiplied by 0 squared, take 1, which we know is just going to be negative 1. So the location of the turning point is 2, negative 1. So I suppose now we'd like to find the intercepts. So first of all, we will find the y-intercept. So let x equal 0. If we let x equal 0, y becomes a half multiplied by 2 squared, take 1. 2 squared is 4 times a half is 2, take 1 is 1. Finding the x-intercepts now, let y equal 0. 0 equals a half, 2 take x, all squared, take 1. Solving for x, add 1 to both sides and divide by a half, so it becomes 2 equals 2 take x, all squared. 
So to get rid of this squared, we need to take the square root. And remember, whenever we take the square root, there's always going to be two solutions, the positive and the negative solution. So we get plus or minus the square root of 2 equals 2 take x. And solving, we get x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 2. Now, approximately, square root of 2 is about 1.4. So if we wanted to equate this to a decimal, we've got x equals... Um, 3.4 and x equals about 0.6 approximately and uh, the approximate sign is actually a squiggly equals sign so it looks something like that now we have enough information to graph this thing so we'll set up some axes label our axes it's always important to label our axes first of all putting the location of the turning point 2, negative 1. Now the y-intercept is at 1, so it's going to be there. And the x-intercepts are about 0 0.6 and about 3.4. So we're going to have a parabola that looks something like that. And that's a little better than my last one. And if we're going to state the transformations that have taken place from the basic parabola x squared, um, we would say that it's had a, it's got a dilation of a factor of a half parallel to the y-axis. It's got a reflection in the y-axis because the negative is inside the bracket here. It has had a horizontal translation of two units to the right, or in the positive x direction, and it has a vertical translation of one unit down or in the negative y direction.